Probably had to have been a, it had to have been a juggalo. A juggalo smoking a whole Virginia Slim and one drag in your kitchen isn't impressive. Which is still impressive. Let's not like diminish yeah. it by being a Virginia Slim. It's like putting down a Fago in one go. Imagine putting down and, like and a not bur- and not burping. Yeah, imagine putting down like a fucking I don't know fl- Fago uh, flavors, but like a, a Mount Fago. <laughs> what, what do they call it? What's a Mountain Dew Fago? Is it a Mount Fago? It's or Moon like, Mist, right? Moon Mist. I just what? like the. Oh, I just pulled that out of my. Oh, dude, just the mental, ether. <laughs> just the mental yeah. image of a dude wearing fucking black and white face paint, just like staring us all in the face, ripping a dart. Though, will be something that's hard to forget. I, I think Stuart just shorts. told us something about himself. Some jinkos down to his yeah. ankles. Stewart I'm, just has this jug of knowledge on That was some like <laughs> repressed like Jefferson County, Missouri bullshit that I just like. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're having memories. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. trying to, you're trying to suppress right now. Ineffective, bro. Ineffective, yeah. I'm, I, I can tell you right now, 100%, I've never drank a Fago. Fago's never touched my lips in my life. You look that's charmed. That's fucking that's that's, pr- that's if talking about white privilege. That's that's <laughs> white privilege. I've never had a Fago. I've had a few uh, Fagos in but never I've never drank with a juggalo. Yeah. True. I never went yeah. I never went whoop whoop to you. I feel like I feel like it's common juggalo practice though, that like if you're in a room of like ten juggalos, right? Maybe just five juggalos, and you're the only one with a fago. You have to put a straw for each juggalo. <laughs> Gotta share because like set, everyone in that room has herpes. Yeah, you basically just set that. You set the fago in the middle. You all hold hands. You you know you 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 give one whoop whoop. You know for the gods for providing the fago, and and then you all uh, take a community sip together. You shout out Great Malenka. But before that, you rip a you rip a Reggie hit out of a bong. And you have to hold the Reggie smoke in while you rip your Fago upside down while dudes punch you in the stomach and shout whoop whoop. What's the it's... most Juggalo weed <clears throat> peripheral? I don't even know what, what that word means. Like the like a bong. <laughs> Come on, Stu. We've not we've been through this one, this game before. Stop using big words. What is the words. most juggalo technique of smoking weed? Uh, it's got to be getting, a bomb. Getting shotgunned out of your sister's mouth. I just. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's that's, that's, pretty, that's honestly. Okay, the most the, yeah, that's the most you're juggalo. right. Gas, Gas mask, mask is like sure. trashy. You're wasting it, but you don't care because it's straight mm. fucking Reggie. No, you're Burns 100% your eyes. correct. Uh, I, I the first time I mean the first time I ever used a gas mask was in a juggalo's yeah I mean wait, so we won't we won't dox my boy but I've no. got a if you've listened to our past episodes I'm pretty sure like one of our first episodes I talked about juggalos getting me out of a out of a tricky sitch in the snow uh, same <laughs> same group of same group of juggies um, but this is like the head jug um, he basically was like the you walked into his house his mom was there um coughing up a storm she was the sweetest lady in the world but she was like you know i mean it was just like she's dying she, she yeah she was happy she raised she raised a juggalo <clears throat> she went through a lot I mean. she, not, and no she and she raised like 10 juggalos because she was like the community like everybody the called her mama when you walked into everybody called her mama even i called her mama when i went over there and and you know they had the pit bull and like you know it's like it was like the same it was just like this it was what you thought was going to you were, and then you walked into his room and like he had reptiles he had a, he had, he literally had a piranha he had he had a piranha on a tank he had black light posters grandma's boys playing on the old ass tv it's what hey. you would expect a juggalo's bedroom to look like <laughs> for the piranhas <clears throat> We worked. I worked with a guy at Tucker's. Side note, um, who again won't, won't say his name, but he uh, had a cut on his hand from Tucker's from like cooking. He had cut his hand, and we we got him to. Uh, he considered 
putting his bloody finger in the in the prana tank for twenty dollars, and he didn't do it. Thank God. But he was so desperate for twenty dollars, he almost put his bloody finger. He was gonna let the prana get to it, but he was gonna like just dangle it in there for a second. Uh, and it's so funny. And and same guy, same guy who one day in the middle of our shifts, me and a couple buddies were walking around. We had just come into work, and he's like. Bro, he's like, I get, I got bit by this fucking spider last night. Everybody's like, what do you mean? He's like, dude, black, uh, or he's like a brown recluse. And everybody's like, bro, you didn't get bit by no damn brown recluse. They're like, that motherfucker starts eating your skin. Like you, you literally have a hole. He goes, oh, you mean like this? And he lifted up his shirt and like, he literally had a giant hole in his, like in his (laughs) nipple area and the manager saw it and they were like, bro, you need to go. And like, they literally (laughs) made him clock out and leave. Because they're like, dude, why are you here cooking people's food with an open? Bur-? This is like ten years ago, but like, you what are you gonna do? Your chest? I I yeah. did the same thing. I got I when I was loading trucks, uh, for my current employer, <laughs> I was stacking pallets, and you know, you know, Nick you used to work with me stacking pallets. They get wet, they're cold, they're dark. It's a perfect place for shit to hide in. Well, I got bit by a brown recluse while stacking pallets. Didn't know it at the time until I had like a, you know, puffy pink spot on my my belly. <laughs> Bro. Until eventually it's it necrosis kicked in and it just ate this big black hole into my abdomen. And so and then like I just kind of just kept it clean and just kept working, kept doing my thing. Until one day, like I like got to my sister's house, and I guess I like flopped on the couch. My shirt rode up, and she screamed. She goes, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> and I have this giant black hole in my stomach, and I was like, "Oh, I got bit by a spider." She's like, "What the fuck?" I was like, yeah, "It was like a month ago." She's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> it was a month ago. Yeah, <laughs> but, you got I got a scar. Half your stomach. Like sh- That's a yeah. Weird. But yeah, so that we we almost we almost had some shit go down in, in this jugger room. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude, so you, you walked in and like you basically, I mean, it was everything in, you, you would think about dirty pipes, bongs that had, that water hasn't been changed in uh, dirty, dirty since the day water. it was made. Um, and then a gas mask. It was the first time I ever smoked out of a gas mask. And this was like a, this was like a uh, antique gas mask. He had like a world war two, <laughs> like a fighter jet, like gas mask in his room that he probably a really if he acrylic bong attached to it. Yeah. Like if he would have preserved this thing or wherever he found it may have been worth some money. And he just said, fuck it and attached a bong to it. Um, <laughs> and dude, I'll never forget. Dude, he takes it to the antiques roadshow. They're like, sir, if you didn't put a bong on this thing, it would be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars they're like sir what is this, this? is like, a collector's would, item yeah it's we, we, what is that like, smell well, let's get rid of that <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so i mean dude it, it it was it was wild and like i remember like he would blow people's minds with that thing like he would have people come in like uh uh we had a couple dudes like some cooks from uh you know after our shifts would we would go because we would kick it there after work all the time obviously and we would go over there and and uh, we would like put that gas mask on cooks and shit. And they'd be like, they would like take their, the mask off. They'd be coughing. And they're crying. They're like, is this how you white boys are doing it? Is this how you white boys are doing it? You're like, God oh, damn. Like, you're, 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 like crying. Supposed to close your eyes, bro. <laughs> the first time, my, first time my, one of my buddies did a uh, gravity bong was there. And he didn't understand that you have to stop. <laughs> so like at one point, he put the fucking, he, he goes down on it. And he comes back up. And he's just like water coming out of his face <laughs> and out of his mouth because like he didn't stop when he got to the water uh so this is just like a, i mean it's literally what you would think about uh, the only thing that isn't happening like you is you would think there's people like suspended on the fucking roof from the ceiling like doing juggalo shit but like that was the only thing that wasn't happening but like you walked outside there were like juggalos walking around it was just That's, like a that was something i learned home. early in my like restaurant uh working life was that like uh so like it was always funny i had these buddies who were out back at one of the restaurants i worked and they were like smoking weed out of a pipe and the cooks who are black they came out and they're like are you guys smoking crack 
Like they think it's so weird when white people like apparently that is a very white, white thing to smoke smoke, to, to smoke out of glass and pipes and stuff. Yeah, because they're like all about papers, blunts, and everything. And that was yeah, just like oh, yeah. <laughs> these kids. I'll always remember though. They're like Reggie just a, just told us we were he thought we were smoking crack off the side of the building in the middle of a shift. I was like that. I was yeah, that was a that was a learning moment. I was like oh so that makes complete sense when you're like oh yeah them hitting the gas mask is something completely out of the normal just like getting fucking wrecked if you don't know what like, if you don't know what the gas mask like what's coming at you bro you're it, it gets in your eyes gets in your nose gets in everywhere it's like it's i not went, even I, it's not even cool unless you just to say you did it. no one looks I, cool I, doing I, it dude i yeah. worked with this lady um this older lady who i at the same place who i did not get along with for years while i worked there and did not we used to argue um i worked with her every tuesday um did just we, we did not get along um first year i meet shan uh her her parents have um they always get passes down to mardi gras every year like tent passes and stuff like they get the hook up well i went the first year because i was still drinking and um you know so we're getting all fucked up we're down there drinking all day long you know and then afterwards they always go back like they got friends and stuff and family that live right off the road and the route so like you know, they'll, they go, there's partying going on all day long. So, so after we leave these tents in like that area, we go, we take this like short ride back to this house that everybody's going to to party at. And like, it's like either like her cousins or somehow they're related. So we had bought a, ma a gas mask down there. Shannon and I bought a gas mask at Mardi Gras. It was like, <laughs> like the off cart yeah. So something? they were selling them down there at, at yeah, Mardi Gras. So we so bought funny. one. Um, and you know, one that had the little acrylic bong attached to it and everything. We get back and we're packing the first like bowl into this thing. And around the corner comes that old lady that I used to argue with at every every Tuesday. We hated each other. And we put our differences aside while ripping a gas mask <laughs> in, in, the, in the kitchen of this house. I mean, she she I'm not kidding you, she was in her 70s. The peace pipe, dude. That's the that, fucking yeah. the, ulti peace the ultimate yeah. the ultimate peace pipe. That's so, so fucking funny. It was it was pretty it was pretty wild. That, like all these years, like it was like she was like, I never hated you. She's like, I just thought you had so. It was like that. You're I just knew you had right, so much kid. more potential, you know, because I was ah, I, mean, I was like sixteen. You. Come you know, here. I was, are, 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 you know, I was like whatever when I was working for. I was like 15, 16, 17 years old. So like, I was ripping lines of drugs off the bar window during shifts. You know, what I'm saying like so like not You're being a punk. I was not my mind my 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 the last thing i cared about was the bitch on table five that needed iced tea okay like it was not <laughs> my priority back then um but it was cool a stellar employee but That's dude there was like a five-year period that like i had a a, a a pipe on me at all times like just like a, a just at all times whether it was just like a you know big one a small one you had one in the car like you had one you just always had a little glass pipe with you at all times you know and and like i chill everywhere em. i went a chill em somewhere like it's, it's, it's like that something in missouri that could get you in a little trouble you know just just feel that rush yeah just, like i like, having it on your person remember in college i had the i had the the one hitter quitter but it was um disguised as the cigarette lighter in my car I had the old uh, Toyota Camry, and you could pull it out, unscrew the metal piece that goes into it, and then you just have this like the, the smoking symbol mouthpiece, pack a bowl, go into algebra. Dude, you accidentally I, press it, it just ignites all your shit on fire. You're like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> you used to have that. You used to have that little pipe, the one, the the, the green one, that like the little magnetic one. Remember that, the little magnetic. Oh yeah, it would collapse. It looked like Legos. It would collapse yeah. down into a little cube, put it in a pocket <laughs> that I could unfold it, snap it together with the magnet. Christ, that's some ninja shit, dude. Bro, I, I love. I'm a big fan of gimmicks, and when I was like a teenage and college pothead. Yeah, Nick will tell you I had all the toys. It's a he's it's the pro wrestling in him, dude. It's the it, gimmick, just, dude. I love there's the just gimmick. something about a gimmick that 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 gets Stuart going. He's just mark he's just marking out on weed. I mark out on paraphernalia. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, I didn't uh, speaking of wrestling, I didn't watch that. I, I I still need to watch that promo you sent me from the other day. I totally I'm just not thinking about it, but I've seen everybody raving about it the, about the Sammy uh, and Cody bit, dude. Sammy, yeah, Sammy Very and Cody. Good. So these boys or just killing it like what a fucking i need to start tuning in again weekly i guess because this it's becoming like 
at least at least for what is this the end of the show did they end the show out like that how'd that go uh that was the end of that was what monday night smackdown i uh or not monday night monday night, monday night raw, raw, dude. Monday raw. Smackdown. you fucking beginner you know what i'm saying like monday night he's like monday night heat i was gonna let i was gonna let this it, was, it was shotgun <laughs> saturday night okay yeah it was shotgun <laughs> saturday night um they uh yeah, they they're killing it. I and I saw remember last week or whenever we talked about this, I was saying that we were talking about like what they could do for this, and maybe there's a little upset coming up in Montreal. And I saw Ariel Hawani. Shout out Ariel Helwani, the nose. Uh, he was saying, "Is there an upset brewing on the horizon?" That that he thinks that there might they might be, and he know how he in tune with wrestling he is. I mean, the guy like literally does one-on-ones i mean he's like the official one-on-one guy now for the wwe but he thinks they might be doing that and I, i'm thinking dude my boy might Sammy's get the title country i think he might get it for a second i think he might upset roman in montreal i really do i it won't be a clean pin i called it you know i called the, him and jay uso thing they're already working together that's kind of like the storyline i saw that so if he if he comes out and fucks him and and there's like a not a clean pin type thing it might happen but it, but the Uso thing is beautiful because yeah, like he's siding with Sammy. He's got sympathy for, but he's still a he's still an Uso. So they defended their titles uh, earlier this week or late last week. I can't remember if it was Monday or Friday, but they defended their titles successfully. Uh, still, like it's still business on that end of things. But then when you get to the bloodline, that's where things. Did. But he's still an Uso. It's it's great story writing. If this if there was a moment to hop back into wrestling and just check in, this is the time to do it. Dude, Between, wrestling's fucking back. Let's go. I'm excited. It's it's good for right now. I'm sure <clears throat> you know once they use up this storyline. I mean, then what the fuck? Yeah, is where's that, that AEW crowd at? Where are them? Where are them motherfuckers Dude, at? AEW is just God. They were real loud for a second. Real They're... real hot. Bro, you motherfuckers weren't even like you were. Look, you guys are the minor leagues. Like you guys are not. You guys, it was, it was not. It was impressive for a second, but it's all about like, like that's the problem. Like you, it was the problem with uh, uh, WCW back in the day. You can be hot for a second. Like it's easy to be hot for a quick second. It's easy to dump millions and millions and millions and go for it. You know, and and really, but like it's how can you survive like do you have the longevity like do you have that and like dude their their ability to 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 progress wrestlers and like build wrestlers is dog shit like all of the stars in their in their organization are you know besides you know i mean even jericho like they're all ex wwe guys uh the most of them are washed made up. is m is uh mjw or whatever he's nice like i'll give you he's probably one of the best promo cutters in the game if he would be huge in WWE, yeah, he won't go, be... but he would be insane there. Um, it would take him to a whole other level. It he's kind of like, all they got. They have some good dudes though from WWE, like they I have, don't know, like, like Adam, Adam, Adam Cole, maybe. Yeah, Adam Cole's cool. They have talent, but they don't have direction. The problem right. is, is that what's the dude, Tony Khan? Tony yeah. Khan, he doesn't have balls like Vince, where. It, it, there's too many chiefs, not enough natives. And so the wrestlers are running the asylum. And the problem with the wrestlers is that they're all young and they're all, for lack of a better term, they're all spot monkeys. They're all like, oh, I just want to do the craziest shit and be seen. No, dude, be seen by cutting a great fucking promo and telling a great story in the ring. Instead, you just have these, like, you can do flips all day long and you're, and you're Sammy fucking Guevara. But I don't give a fuck about Sammy Guevara, even though he's an incredible talent, because yeah, he doesn't no, he hasn't told a fucking worthwhile story once. Do they still have Regal? Is Regal there? Or is he back? No, in WWE? he's back. He's back in WWE, bro. So they so they, so they essentially get, does he still get nosebleeds all the time? Is that still his gimmick? He's, Remember when Regal. he was like, oh yeah, William Regal's whole thing was that he was like a Japanese like porno anime where he like his nose would just bleed every like five seconds that was like his whole gimmick <laughs> when he was with no? tajiri you guys don't remember that at all when he was with tajiri i don't know it was like early 2000 shit because that's when i that's the last Raw i can dm shit last time i checked in on william regal was about 2000 was in the bush presidency so 
Bro, he was killing it for a minute. Uh, but the William Regal thing in AEW is a reflection of a much larger problem in AEW where it's all this young talent, emphasis on talent, but they refuse to listen to the people that know what's going first. on. The guys yeah. that know the business and know how to have longevity. There, there, there's Jake the fucking Snake Roberts over there. Who, no shit. Jake the Snake Roberts is like a... Um, he's not like a booker, but he, he helps come up with shit and helps manage talent, helps develop talent, helps try to write. write. But like you got guys like that. who Jake the Snake Roberts was not an in-ring talent. Let's just face back. He had like four fucking moves, the DDT, but he could cut a fucking promo and scare the shit out of little kids. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and so this guy knows all about getting over. And you're not going to listen to this guy? Did you ever you're see not- that? Did you, you watch uh, Peanut Butter? Or was it Peanut Butter Falcon, right? Yeah. That, yeah. yeah is, that, 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 is that the one with Shia, Shia LaBeouf? LaBeouf? Shia LaBeouf, the wrestling yeah. movie. Good movie. Great movie. Like, look, we're not, you know, we don't mean to bring up Shia. I feel like he's been kind of buried for for oh. for rightful reasons but like I love boy that. they they have really put him like that you don't hear about Shia La- LaBeouf at all anymore like uh he was like on a trajectory i feel like yeah. his hot wings was still to this day one of my best the, one of the best he's hot, mount rushmore episodes. hot wings episodes he is no, mount he, rushmore he's mount rushmore of internet memes remember what the he will not divide us shit and the 4chan guys use oh, the yeah. stars in the sky to calculate where that little flag he had posted was and got it taken down that was literally internet history right there Dude, or when I he mean, did uh uh what's just he did fucking the, do the, it the script reading with uh fast times oh, yeah. on high oh yeah great when he was high in the and the truck he, and, and he played fucking spicoli in front of sean penn and sean penn goes this kid's fucking good you can see yeah. a mouth it and you like so well, you get that like like dude spicoli just told you that you're a fucking dope ass spicoli Dude, he, there was also the uh, climbing through your window, Shia LaBeouf. Dude. Running for he, your life from Shia LaBeouf. He had this program on maybe on YouTube thing. It's called Actors Roundtable. Um, and, and they basically just have um, you know actors sit around a table and like have a discussion. So and, it's like dinner for five? Yeah, so in this Afro. one... And I forget who hosts it, but like for so three years ago, they had Shy on there and it's the Hollywood. Who is this? The Hollywood reporters who I guess is who actually puts this on. But uh, it was called Actors Roundtable and it had Adam Driver, Shia LaBeouf, Robert De Niro, Tom Hanks and Jamie Foxx. And they're all sitting at a table and they're just like having a conversation. And like it is like it's wild because like Shia LaBeouf's obviously like the younger guy there, you know, and the other guy from uh, whatever. I forget what show or movie, but. You know, it's 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 like you can tell how much respect these. I think Adam Sandler might be sitting there too. There's like somebody else there, or Ben Stiller, or somebody. But like you could tell how much like respect all of these people have for him. Like if he could just not be a shit human being, shit. yeah. Like the guy is so talented. Like, but the peanut butter falcon was so good. If you haven't seen it, Jack. Like seriously, watch it. No, it's I, like I, him. I, yeah. Have I've you seen, seen it? Peanut butter yeah, falcon. Yeah, great movie. Like that great was. Movie. Like the whole Jake the Snake. Th- I mean, the whole thing was so good. Um, um, he also put out another movie that I can't remember the name of it, uh, which is like, which is really good. But either way, um, yeah, sad that, sad, sad that Shia LaBeouf, what do you do, beat that girl up or something? Or sexually assaulted her? All of the above. Yeah, it's, it's hard Damn. to keep track of these days. Remember when he locked many. himself in that box and let, or remember, or just said anybody could do whatever to him? And then that he s- said that chick raped him. Remember that? <laughs> I, is it, that is it, my is mind it rape if bit. you give her permission? Here, no, it was Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> uh, woman. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf, I was raped during performance art project. This is 2014. Um, so basically he... Um, the actor said a woman whipped my legs for 10 minutes and then stripped my clothing proceeding, proceeding to rape me during his silent, silent performance artwork. I am sorry. Uh, hashtag. I am sorry. So this was like, uh, cause he was doing like an art thing where he, 
stood so publicly he was able to sit in front of him and members of the public queued to be able to sit in front of him in a one-on-one -on -one art piece it ran for five days in february um and i guess you just sat there in front of shia labeouf and, and raped shia labeouf yeah, and, and some chick just <laughs> some chick just fucking went imagine ham dude, on shia imagine the dude who was behind at, her yeah he's like do i have to fuck shia labeouf <laughs> he's like how the fuck do i top that he said like, i just yeah. wanted to play patty cake what the fuck yeah. He's like, God damn it. Like, so he's like, fucking like, like, he's like curled up in the corner. He's like, I, it's just, again, the airport guy. I want to shake your hand. That's Bro, it. He steps aside. He goes, all right, you, you guys, a couple of you guys can go ahead of me. He's like, I got to think of, I got to try yeah. to figure out how I'm going to top this. Reset. <laughs> yeah, I, my, this, this chick fucked up my whole plan. <laughs> I have no or the idea. Guy the next guy in, you come in, Shia LaBeouf's like panting, limp, <laughs> limp dick just sitting there. And you're just like. He's got his hands on his knees. <laughs> Dude, there's just people fucking getting back in line. They're just circling. <laughs> just like, not age but before that, beauty. <laughs> but I think that was when Shia was going through like his remember. I mean, he's always obviously been fucking nuts, but like uh there was like that public bag nuts. over his head. <clears throat> yeah, when he was like publicly nuts for a while. I'm um, not famous anymore. Yeah, Shia. Yeah, you you're always you're always gonna be even even Steven. Stevens. What was his yeah. name on that show? Uh, Dude, even Stevens. Lou, Louis Stevens, and he was also on. Uh, in the, I think yeah, one Louis my Stevens. I know I've said this before, but my, one of my top five favorite movies of all time. And it's, yes, it's ridiculous that it's in my top five. Holes. It's a good movie. It's a fucking it's a amazing movie. movie. Top five, eh, but yeah, it's a good no, movie. but like it's a good like name a bad scene in that movie. Yeah. There's a, it's a great movie. Yeah, it's a fucking yeah, it's, it's a good one. But yeah, what's the what's the iconic line? He's like, Grant, Danny, I'm tired of digging. Well, that's just too damn bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, you know that's never a good made one. In, you know what never made sense in that movie, Holes? Why did nobody ever fucking think to bring a metal detector out there once? Like one, one fucking time. Just keep time. digging holes. Just, just keep digging random holes. We're I've, gonna find I've got this time. big piece of gold inside an iron box with a steel lock. Like, oh, yeah. Boy, like nobody bought one fucking. This would have been a really short movie. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. say that that would have been quick, nice and quick. Shia right. LaBeouf just shows up and goes, "Here, let me show you, motherfuckers, how it's done." <laughs> let me show you how the city boys do this. Show you how the rich, the, the gold rich city kid did it. Yeah, I mean that's basically what he was anyway, right? He was like the guy that. I mean, fucking... but I guess I guess you can make the argument that the kids didn't know that there there was gold out there. They thought they were just digging holes, but the the lady, I mean, she knew what they were doing out there. Like, yeah, she'd been digging that. holes since she was a kid. So I mean, she had, I guess, the patience of a fucking. <laughs> Zen Buddhist monk. <laughs> She's just like, running on such. I will get this eventually. Madame She's just Zerani, running on right? such razor thin margins in the child prison business that she's just she can't even afford to buy a metal detector. She's she just run. Well, she she was making her own fucking fingernail polish out of snake venom. Yeah, <laughs> this bitch is fucking nuts. Yeah, she had a budget. She was probably just addicted to crack. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they never saw her. She's just getting loaded in that fucking I mean, cabin. <laughs> It was an Arquette playing. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. It was an Arquette. <laughs> the bitch's Patricia nose is burning. Right? I think so. Yeah. I think that was the sis. Oh, really? I didn't even know David Arquette had a brother or sister. Sorry. You don't remember? Um, oh, well, he, also had the tra he had the he had the cross dress and sister too, right? Transgender. Oh, is he true? Was there was a full transgender sister from the Wedding Singer. Remember George from the Wedding Singer? Yeah, wait for the Adam Sandler movie. Yeah, what? what the, uh, who is? Wait, who is he in that one? In in Adam Sandler's band, remember George? Uh, Give me time. Oh, okay. Yep, that's him. That's our that that um, Roxana Arquette. I can't remember or her. That. Sorry, I don't mean to be that guy. Was, Alexis Arquette is the Alexis uh, Arquette. Uh, you can that's have the uh, gender you like. And she passed away a few years ago. Damn, dude, David Arquette is. Thanks for that. Family has a lot of actors. And again, that's Stu's like encyclopedic knowledge of absolutely useless information exactly. with, the, with the David Arquette family tree. Just fucking what else family. could I do but have a pop culture podcast? Good point. One of the the only fucking 
David Arquette, one of my favorite David Arquette movies, and I think it's David Arquette. I had hopefully I don't just. You say I'm ready just, to rumble? I'm gonna fight you. Ready to rumble? Great fucking movie. <laughs> Great dude. Let's go. Great fucking movie. Like he's like, I will crown you or whatever, right? right? Isn't that In what he says? Store? Yeah, and that wasn't that his move when he jumps off the rope and he hits you with the uh, he hits you with the fist. That movie is out loud. What's the plot of the plot of this movie? Basically, he there's like a it's like the greatest he this I forget what his name is in the movie, but he's like the greatest wrestler of his time. But he's washed up as shit. It's like David Arquette and his and his buddies go on like a road trip to go see this basically WrestleMania of the, of that time. And it's like a tree, a triple cage match. Uh, it's like oh, three cages right, stacked dude. on top of each other. That's yeah, um, you remember fight club? Yeah. Not that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so basically, and like along the way, you know, obviously there's like some, you know, he meets a bitch, you know, uh, they, but they, uh, they run like, into their, like a, like a China style bitch. Like, does he have to wrestle her? No, they they he meets like a like chick a that he falls in love with, and then um and then he they basically they're helping. This is their all time favorite wrestler is this guy who's like washed up now, and they're the plot is they're helping him basically to get back on top. So like he's along for the ride. They're helping him train, doing all this stuff in in order for him to make this big comeback at this triple cage. And there's like real wrestlers in it and stuff. You know, I think Goldberg's in it. Um, Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, uh, they had a whole they tied in WCW. Let's see, I'm gonna, because remember, see, right. David Arquette ended up winning the WCW yeah, World that. Heavyweight Championship <laughs> while promoting the film. <laughs> yeah. Ready to rumble, uh, wrestler. Yeah, that's right. Oh, shit. I totally forgot Such about that. Wrestler. <laughs> they, they said that was the day that WCW died was when David Arquette was allowed to win the championship. Like All the wrestlers were like, fuck this. This is so stupid. Like, What are we doing here? Which so it had, uh, it had Goldberg, DDP. Mm-hmm. Um, Sid Vicious, Perry Saturn, dude. Perry Saturn got, has an IMDb credit. That's uh, incredible. Booker T, Billy Kidman, Disco Inferno, Disco St- Inferno. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, yeah, dude, they're all yeah. So they're all on this. Fucking right. Yes, you should. Wa- okay, here we go. Here's the wrestling personalities: Goldberg, DDP, Sting. Booker P, Booker T, Randy Savage, Bam Bam Bigelow, rest in peace to the last two. Sid Vicious, rest in peace. My man Juventude Guerrera from Sid back in the day. Lo- who? You say this rest in peace, Sid Vicious? Yeah, I was going to say it's Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious ain't dead. Yeah, well, he did. He's dead in my mind. Uh, <laughs> Kurt, Hen- Kurt Hennig, rest, rest in peace. peace. <laughs> he's, he's dead. He's uh, definitely uh, dead. Disco Inferno. Dude, just dead to me. the shit. Yeah, dude. Sid Vicious is dead to me. Uh, Billy Kidman, the man, Conan, Rey Mysterio, Harry Satterman, Van Hammer. I don't remember Van Hammer. I don't either. <laughs> Such a sick gimmick. Just let's rip off Van Halen and just yeah. be Van Hammer. <laughs> Gorgeous George. George. The announcers, the announcers for the movie were Michael Buffer and uh, Mean Gene Okerlund. Like that. Um, they had all the Nitro girls. So Che, Fire, Spice, Storm, Tigris. They're all in it. Which one did uh, Shawn Michaels marry? Uh, I do not know. He married, um, Shawn Michaels never wrestled for WCW, and yet he married a Nitro girl. And this is something I didn't know. An uncredited appearance. Honky Tonk. By man. the master of Thugonomics himself. John Cena didn't know he was in it. Like, he's seen it a hundred fucking times. Didn't know he's in it. That's probably why, because he's he was probably the prototype at that time. Yeah, he this probably the, was like a heel, like just a bad guy. He was in Ohio Valley Wrestling OVW. Uh, John Cena was the prototype, so he was like a robot cyborg guy, and he used to talk like this and that, and cut a promo. It was really shitty, and he had like a flat top haircut. Looked stupid, and then Batista was. Uh, the Leviathan, and like they had a promo where they like pulled him out of like whatever shitty river flows through Cincinnati. I <laughs> think they dredged him up, and they're like, "Look what we found in the bottom of a river." Pista. <laughs> he might have just been a guy in the background, from what I'm seeing. It looks like he might have been holding. Uh, 
Yeah, he he looks like he's holding something in the gym for somebody. Like he's not even a fucking he's just spotting. He's just spotting basically, and he has like Give a it everything you got. Give it he's everything got like you a got. blonde mohawk or like a blonde military cut. Yeah, that I'll was always that was his John, haircut for the prototype. Yeah. I'll always remember John Cena telling me that the United States had killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We have eliminated and brought to a permanent end Osama bin Laden. Dude, that's that is a hype ass video for real. Like if you want like, go back and watch that shit, that shit's fucking hype. Dude, any, he... any one of us would want to be that guy to be like, I want Is to John Cena the single greatest patriot ever? I mean, he was the Marine, right? Has anybody ever done anything? <laughs> Has, who's done more for this country? Than John Cena, probably Jimmy Carter, <laughs> and that's maybe. I mean, Jimmy well, Carter, went, John Cena, everybody else, basically. I mean, and that's only because Jimmy's old ass is out there. He's been dead for a year, and he's still building houses. Uh, he's he's dead like Sid Vicious is dead. You know, like <laughs> fucking. I swore I thought Sid Vicious was dead. <laughs> now like, I have I, to Google it, dude. Are I could have you? sworn Sid Vicious was the lead singer of the Ramones. He what well, well you had Don't Sid Vicious, you had Sid Justice, Psycho Sid. Don't do that. Sid uh, Sid I don't even Udy. I'm being dead ass. I'm being dead ass. I don't even know. He's Sid, Psycho he Sid, is alive. Sid, Justice, Sid Vicious. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 62. He's 62. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Sid. <laughs> I could have sworn you were dead as fuck. Uh, but I'm glad you're not. Yeah. Glad when he you're broke not. His leg? You no. ever see the video of him snapping a leg? Don't want to see it, but no, didn't see oh, it. Oh, we should we definitely need to watch on the pod sometime. But there's a this is the like <laughs> late stage, like Let's go. <laughs> late stage terminal WCW where like shit's going bad 1999 to like 01. And what you're and about to tell me is it got it, worse for Sid. It got so bad. <laughs> it got so bad. Because you know, he's a big dude. I mean, he's probably like six four. But just also just a heavy dude. He's just a big built like a brick shit house dude. And someone at WCW is like, dude, you need a top top rope maneuver. Someone in management was like, we need you to go top rope on shit. And he's like, right. yeah, no, the go fucking top time, rope. Sid. He used to do like second rope like axe hammer. Yeah, axe yeah, handle. yeah. Where you get in the middle rope and just kind of yeah. jump. Yeah. And it and it looks bad. It looks it looks he's because he's such a big guy. Yeah. But someone's like, no, you need to like go top rope. And so they're like, what can he do top rope? Big boot. <laughs> so so the, that the his opponent's standing up. He gets up on the turnbuckle, flying big boot, and lands on both feet. Well. Oh, dude, he probably... This motherfucker. Yeah, you know, yeah. he, he lands, and you see the leg just give. Mm. He goes down, and the boot's like... Dude, he's like, like 40 at this time, probably, Bro. too. 35, 40 at this time. It's so embarrassing. Something he's w- just never going to recover from. Good constantly. Management at that time. He is going to need a hip if he hasn't already. He what? sued who? Yeah, he sued WCW because he his career was kind of over at that point. And they're yeah, like, he, bro, why he, did you have me up on that top he, turnbuckle? He, he <laughs> snapped both bones, tibia and fibia. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's, he snapped that's the hardest those. bone in your fucking body to break. I'm pretty sure. Compound <laughs> fracture, so it, it went. The bone went through, and so I mean, he had to have surgery. There's pins, there's plate, all that shit. He's gonna need hips. He was laid up, and by the time he was eventually able to wrestle again, he's old. He was, and it was over. W's done. Wait, and... re- rewind this shit a little bit. Did he get? Did he get pinned for the three count? <laughs> Like, the, the rough game, did he win, one of did these he win the match? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't keep, you didn't keep wrestling. <laughs> you, you, you didn't finish he the fucked match. up kayfabe, dude. No, this is why he's dead to me. You know, what I'm saying? Take he the yeah, No wonder I don't think about him anymore. He's been dead since that moment. <laughs> he tries to kick like, out at two, and the leg just goes. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, the dude fucking he's wrestling fucking lifts his shoulder on the two and a half couch just so he can fucking put him in a finisher again he gives that ruffle up like gives him a bump <laughs> yeah <laughs> just gives him a bump, dude. <laughs> oh poor sid vicious yeah that's fucked up they they did him real dirty yeah the only person that's historically been able to do that off the top rope big wise is 
uh, the Undertaker with the old school, you know, with the old. And even then, like, because he goes off the middle of the rope, so it's sagging <laughs> with his yeah. big ass. So he might as well be on the second rope anyways when he goes old yeah. school. But like, so you know, he, at least he, he does that. Yeah, yeah, he does that. His opponent does that thing where he goes and he just to give him the extra disrespect, he gets him on the kick out. And then he does that thing where Jeff Hardy spreads your legs like you're at a gynecologist's office and jumps up and double heels right double into your in nutsack. Balls, dude. Yeah, and then great maneuver. Fucking yeah, it classic. Is. He's the goat. Uh, but what you said a second ago is just so we, I don't want it to fall through the cracks. Sid Vicious was in the Sex Pistols. He and Sex Pistols suck. He was not a Ramon. Let's not. Let's just let's just clear. Come that on, up dude. I got. I just got to jerk your a chain a little bit. bit. Sex know, pistols deserve their spot. Yeah, on the shit list because they're garbage. Um, but dude, they're balls. They're like balls. That. You can like both, dude. It's okay. They're they're most fame. They're most famous. The, the most famous uh, member of that band couldn't do shit. <laughs> like he's literally so famous. Sid Vicious couldn't even play bass, dude. Yeah, but then you got Johnny Rotten, dude, and then he went and did fucking Public Image, and Public Image is the shit. Wait, yeah, is, that but Bonnie, Johnny, is that Bonnie's? Is that Bonnie's dad? So Bonnie, so no, dude, Johnny Rotten. <laughs> no, that's John, that's, that's a step uncle. Step uncle. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. dude. The but even Johnny, dude, Johnny Rotten is just a sour old fuck who sells like, butter. Yeah, he is a piece, dude. A piece of never shit. been a Sex Pistols fan. Never liked their music. He can never uh, churn up a hit, but he could churn up some butter. But um, dude, g- give me the cl- give me the Clash and give me the Ramones all day. Give me all of it, dude. It's all good. But the Sex Pistols, dude, I'd rather listen to Two Squirrels. Fuck. Yeah, but think about um, how cool of a band name that is. Sex Pistols yeah. is a great name. Sex Pistols is a great name, and they and it's kind of to me, it's one of those things that's like uh, uh, the All American Rejects. The wrong band got it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, yeah, to I, if if to to this day, I still think the All American Rejects is one of the best band names to go to. Just the fattest group of pussies, um, <laughs> hey, dude. Those they wrote hits though. Yeah, pop, I mean they those they knew how to do pussies it. knew how to fucking write a catchy radio. Well, dude, know, they were in it. They hits, I like they that. in and out. That give you gives you hell song. I like those songs. Yeah, yeah, it's a on. catchy song. But here's the other thing. Like the, the but remember the remember they had that song about my dirty what was it? My dirty little secret. I'll keep right? you my dirty little secret. Dirty and they all secret. and they all like that. Remember how corny that video was? And they're all holding up their dirty secret. And like one guy's like, I like the smell of my own farts. And like, and like that was a real <laughs> sign in the <laughs> that room. video wasn't you and me, Nick. That yeah. was for troubled <laughs> teenage girls. Yeah, like, <laughs> and guess it was what? like, a, it was like all these weird, yeah, all these weird signs, like people telling you their dirty secrets. But that's the one that always stuck to me. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, one, that's not like... even that's weird because I think everybody does. I think that's like a unanimous worldwide thing. They had they're a video. flashing the sign. They're flashing the signs by. It's like my uncle touched me. You're like, wait, go back to that one. What the fuck <laughs> what? did that sign say? <laughs> we might need to look into that. One. <laughs> fuck the fact that you you only eat white jelly beans. Like <laughs> I I need to hear about the fact of why I, I want to know why your cousin is touching that last girl. Wait, like, golden <laughs> showers? Was that really what that sign <laughs> said? That, what? Like, what the fuck? No, they Kelly peed on you too. They had a they had one cool video. I remember it, the whole video was literally just them going into a fireworks store buying up like the entire store and then setting it off and i was like this is a good fucking video <laughs> in the store no i would say they wait till the sun goes down Burn the fucking place down. they take that shopping cart into like a field they just tip the cart over all the fireworks fall out and then they just start blowing shit up during the chorus and i'm like this is a budget well fucking used yeah the bet yeah that was a good one i the best my favorite music video of low budget music video is to this day is probably fat lip by some 41 that was a good one. A pool or some shit a, well that, that was that where they're one just one like the, skating the around and is that oh, at yeah. the very beginning they're in the convenience store or is that beatboxing at the convenience store yeah it's uh in too uh, deep want... is the one where they're fucking that's right where the, the fucking guy, guy comes the guy comes out playing the solo he's like brown tone yeah Nick, i don't know if you i don't know if you can do this with me i wonder if you can Three, two, one. 
I already don't Nevertheless, like my dress for the occasion is number 32, <laughs> not the other I situation. If it beat, move your feet, then don't change the station and pack your bags. We're leaving on a perfect, permanent vacation. Well, I'm a disaster, a microphone master. Pick up the beat and rock the ghetto blasters. It's not about the money, hotel, hotels, or resorts. It's about sweating all them bitches in them biker shorts. That's impressive. That's actually very fucking impressive. That you know I, that. I thought you knew that with me. I did not. I don't know it. I I remember them what doing it. I remember the nugget of memory gold. You just yeah. Well, that you just I, that's that such for a, us fresh. And like, remember the little kid who starts making out with the chick like five years older than him? He's like the little skater. That, is boy. that not Andy Milanakis or the Man I, Show I, Boy? I, I, I think it <laughs> I might swear be the it was man, one of those two. I, it might be the, the Man Show fucking, Boy. Uh, oh yeah, the Man Show kid. Dude, like the he, Man Show Boy was a fucking like he, he was on Soul Plane. He would just go to one. Like, hey, nice one. Fuck. What the fuck is this twelve-year-old saying? Oh, you just went into. You just went into. Zach, Jack just went robot mode for a he second. Glitched the fuck out. Oh, <laughs> I said. Uh, we'll, my, my, we can cut that. But uh, the, I was saying the man show boy. He would always go up to women and be like, "Nice tits. You want to fuck?" And they're like, "You're twelve <laughs> years old, dude. What the fuck is? Are you talking about?" The man. I was just talking about the man show the other day with uh, Adele because he sent me a, a Dave Attell clip on YouTube, and I was like, "He's like, dude, this guy's hilarious." I'm like, "Bro, you don't. Know, I'm like, you don't remember Dave Attell?" He's like, uh, "He's like, it kind of sounds familiar." I'm like, "Remember late night with Dave Attell, like the show on Comedy Insomniac. Central." Or insomniac, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that what was, was the best. I saw David show. Tell live in Nashville like a couple months back. Was he still great? Oh, he's so, he's fucking hilarious. Yeah, he's, he's like he's, he's the guy. best. He's a, he's club a legend. Comic. He yeah. should be doing theaters and he should be doing stadiums, but because he's the fucking goat. But he's just such a purist. He's still out there doing the fucking clubs because he doesn't promote. Him yeah, and right. Stanhope, they don't promote. Yeah, no, I uh, do. Oh, St- that- Stanhope's the man. My buddy. Uh, Scott out in um, California. He, I wouldn't say they're like he's like good friends with Doug Stanhope. Doug Stanhope, but anytime like Stanhope's in the area, like and he goes to the show, you know they always kind of get together for a drink after the show and stuff like That's that, and like get a picture. Also, together. a former uh, host of the Man Show, who Stanhope? Yeah, he, he the very last season when well, it was Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Adam Carolla. Carolla, yeah, and then they dipped and they tried to do one more season and it was. Joe Rogan and Doug Stanhope. No shit, I didn't yeah, know. He, Did they still Joe, do the- Joe Rogan and Stanhope trying to do the ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy? Oi, oi, oi! Like fuck that. Shit. And, he, and the old guy was already dead then, right? The old guy, the guy who started the ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy, because that was the old guy that did that. Oh, I, I don't. All remember I remember from. Guy. All I remember from that show is the women jumping on the tram. You remember the old guy from the man, man show and the he man like show the, boy, Adam like Carolla. Literally- Am Carroll and Jimmy Kimmel had two totally different career paths after that, though. Like God, but Love Line was so good, though. With uh, it was Adam Carolla and Doctor Drew on Love oh, Line. Oh, dude, I would week. listen to that on the way home from work at like ten o'clock to like midnight or something like that. Love Isn't Line it? was fucking quintessential yeah, shit. Bill Bill Foster. Bill Foster. Let me look. Bill Foster was the old guy who sat at the piano, and he always had. He's the one that chugged his beer. He was the old guy that chugged the beer. Um, when they sang the song, he sat at like the piano, and he ended. Yeah, he died in two thousand two, May tenth, two thousand. Um, dude, you just unlocked a fucking memory for me, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, he was the guy. He always had like the conductor hat on, the train conductor yeah. hat. Yeah, and he always had <laughs> looks straight out of Shining Time Station. Yeah, dude, that's like Holy when I think shit. of the band show, that's what I think of is when they went to Ziggy Zaggy Ziggy. And then like after they did it, they the camera zoomed to him, and he ch- and he took a big old swig out of the beer and. Set it back on the piano that he was sitting at. Um, yeah, that and the girls dude. on the trampoline. Those were the two things I always. Uh, but well, I didn't know they had a, a a Rogan. Now I'm seeing it now. The Rogan Stanhope. Yeah, oh, dude, wow. on, on paper that should have like, on paper that should have been fucking awesome. Yeah, it sounds tight. Like on paper, you're like, how how does that go wrong? And then you're like, okay. yeah, but Joe, Ro- Joe, Joe Rogan, Rogan still had hair at that time. He wasn't. He the only same gained guy. his superpowers of hosting when he lost the hair. He had to trade yeah. it. He yeah, he sacrificed that. the hair on the altar uh, of the god of pod. Yeah, true that. I agree. He uh, God, he, he was just a little do the fear factor bullshit. Probably like right almost immediately after though. So that was probably a launch pad for that. God, he made so much money off that. I yeah, think that's I probably most of his wealth is still fucking fear factor shit. That or dual JRE is probably the big one now, but. 
since he got that million. fat Spotify yeah. pay, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big they actually uh they just did uh I went to my buddy um Zach's house for the fights this past weekend. Um shout out Zach and Black um Black Cat <laughs> Creations, my guy. Uh we were over there watching shout the fights. Out. And shout my buddy out, Dave was uh, Dave was there. Dude. Yeah, Dave was there too. Shout out Black Letter Tattoo. Shout out Dave. Um, and uh, we were talking about um uh hold on. Yeah, we were just talking about all that type of shit. Uh, and I just lost my train of thought because I was just watching that. I saw that. I just clicked over here and I saw a Joe Rogan clip from the man show. I got to cue this up for later. <laughs> um, what was I saying? I don't even know, dude. I'm out you of it. You went to go watch the fights at our, at our boy. Uh, yeah, but I, had, I was going to say something about Zach. We were just talking about, uh, we were just talking about, um, dude, that really fucked me up. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll go Joe back Rogan to on the man show. Um, seeing Joe Rogan on the man show. No, we were talking about, um, I actually don't know. Yeah. Let's move on. This is, <laughs> yeah, let's move we're on. never catching yeah, that again. Yeah. We'll never catch that. Shout out to those guys though. Uh, but the fights, the fight we, but, and, and the, but the fights this past weekend were really good by the way. Uh, cool. I uh, agree. Vulcan. Um, I don't think but, uh, Volkanovsky really lost that fight. You think he did lose it or did not? I don't think he, I don't think he lost that fight. Another controversial yeah. decision. Yeah. Oh. So that's, that's gonna... a few in a short amount of time. Why do, what do you think? What do you think about it? Yeah. So what do you think about it, Jack? I mean, I don't know. It just looked like Volkanovski got the better of him on a couple of occasions. Like I, that one punch he landed basically dropped Kamayev to the ground, and there was he didn't he got up from all the takedowns. I think like he yeah, if he didn't want to lose on points, he probably shouldn't have gotten taken down as much, but. I just also think that like the significant strikes, it looked like he was hitting him way harder. And I don't know. It, I mean, just you watch a fight and you kind of, you know, in your heart kind of know what you think who won it. And my gut told me that Volk won that fight. I do. Nine, yeah. I, uh, so I, I have to rewatch the fight. Um, I do remember what I was talking about. It has to do with the fight. So I was talking about uh, Rogan doing the JR, doing the thing uh, we were talking about. Remember how we were talking about how he quit doing um, uh, the fight companion because of um, yeah, you know, I saw Brent, he was doing Brent, it. He was doing it, doing it. Yeah, and he had uh, and he had uh, Eddie Bravo back for the first time in like two years. Um, so he saw, but I saw that they, they like brought the cast back for that. Like it was just kind of, but we were talking about that this past weekend. But we were talking about um, you know Brendan Schaub and and that whole thing. And and uh, we were talking about God, how like so it was fucking annoying so annoying but it was yeah brogan got the crew back for the uh for the fight companion thing and i thought that was that was interesting um but yeah the fight the fight as far as the fights go yeah i i don't know i had to watch the fights back i i think first watch through i thought islam won that fight definitely um i think that it was three two i think that um those first couple rounds i mean dude that first round was bad the third round you know people are like oh volkanovsky won the third round but like dude he literally got cracked he got stumbled and he got his back taken for like three and a half minutes in that fight or in that one and everybody's like well he was throwing those punches from behind and it's like <laughs> in what world does that overshadow being i do want to see one time damage. where somebody has their back taken and they just throw a wild punch that just knocks a dude clean out just and accidentally catches them well remember dude, uh I'm, remember that, a couple years a happened? year or two uh well a year or two ago uh, it wasn't off the back but it was when uh jockery got knocked out by um uh who they call loudmouth kevin holland uh i think it was kevin holland where he has kevin holland's on his back jockery is in his guard so he's on top and like draining down like he's like in a ground and pound position and kevin holland sits up from his back and hits him from his back and jockery silva literally just folds backwards like it was the yeah, he popped up like the undertaker and just punched he him. literally just like Unfound. got up off his back hit him in the face and jockery just folds backwards like it was one of them off his that's back crazy. one of the wildest chaos i've ever seen dude, that's fucking in see that's what uh, I, I need to watch yeah, go back dude. and watch that I yeah the... go, go go look up kevin <laughs> holland uh, Jacare uh, Souza 
uh, knockout and it was it, it was wild. I mean, it was one of those things where like all of a sudden, like he, you know, he's on the ground and all of a sudden you like he hits him and it's like a delayed reaction. Like everybody's like, oh shit, Jacare's kind of stunt. Uh, oh shit, he's fall like and he just like folds backwards and you're just like it's just like the windows fuck. like shut down. Do, do, yeah, do, do. It, it was it was wild. Um is there a place where like there is the entire like back catalog for UFC? Like you want to go see like UFC 100 where the yeah, fuck yeah. Are? So UFC fight, so UFC fight pass um, is a thing, and it's not really. It used to be a. It used to be like kind of like the uh, WWE um, network. It was WWE network's always been better though because they've got it right where you just pay, now it's on Peacock. But like it's even before that, horrible. It's, it's horrible. horrible but, but here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing though. Even if it's horrible for the amount of, you're still getting all the pay per views for free. You're getting everything you want. Like the amount of shit they're giving you is worth dealing with Peacock. You would get, you would pay the monthly fee for UFC Fight Pass. You didn't get any money off of pay per views. So they, you <laughs> yeah, still, you awesome. just ordered them through. You could just order them through Fight Pass. Um, everything was still full price. You, there were fight pass exclusive cards so like now all those espn plus exclusive cards those were just fight pass exclusive cards um and then yeah you've got everything up from you've got everything from ufc one and then but they've also got everything but just like wwe everything they've bought so strike force um uh, uh what was the other one that uh uriah faber and them came from um right uh, w wc uh pride you know all of the things they've bought all of their catalogs are I also remember that. That was there sick. um but now that the espn plus is a thing everything since that deal is cataloged there so you get that through your espn plus they still throw it on the network the network i still think actually has like be uh jujitsu to tournaments and stuff like they'll still live grappling tournament like host grappling tournaments and stuff um but you so now if you have ESPN plus basically all you're getting with the the network now is past events you're not getting and like like grab the back catalog yeah because ESPN plus gets everything so it's sure. based like so I haven't had fight pass in year years but it was always kind of a letdown because like yeah you're like WWE you're paying whatever it was a month five dollars a month ten dollars a month whatever it was for peacock and you're getting everything like you're getting the back catalog you're getting every weekly you show watch wcw sin anytime you want anytime you i could watch you'll be the week. one person watching wcw sin yeah like the only thing that was, sucked was, it was that the wwe network had it so you could actually like navigate the fucking shit by like searching by like it would skip parts like to each match you could just click each ahead match, now you have, each segment that was great yeah, now you now you have to fast forward all the shit, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm not trying to watch every single minute of a 1994 WCW, you know, Nitro. I want to. Why watch, not? Like, you don't you don't like the Heavenly Bodies versus LOD for like a, <laughs> a, a no no a DQ? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not this time. You know, my my taste have matured a little bit. Yeah, they really fucked up. But you know, like I said, the, they they still give you enough to where like you, dealing with the cock is is it's it's okay, it's manageable because like it's still you're still a good deal. Like you're still not paying that much for Peacock, and you're still getting all that shit for free. Sure, do I have to catch up? to where I'm at in the pay-per-view because it keeps buffering and it kicks me out of the entire app. And next thing you know, I'm on my Xbox page and I'm loading back in and I'm trying to fast forward and I'm a little <laughs> bit behind. Yeah, that happens, you know, but for the price, See, it is what it is. I just mail a $5 check every month to Saudi Arabia and so, w, so the, I, the WWE can get its money, you know, faster. I, uh, just a little I'm blood check. But I'm, I'm courteous. You sign it in blood. You go crown yeah. breath. Yes. Yeah, well, let me know. I said to you, the if, crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Here, well, let me know. I'll throw here's a, five here's a five dollar check. Hey, Peacock, by the way, or WC, WWE Network original con Bring back Legends House, Legends House, ECW version. I want middle aged drug addicts in a house together, dude. That I want so Sabu. I want Sandman. I want, I want everybody Rob Van Dam. Yeah, get all these he, fucked up old and, dudes and in all his together. bitches get to come in the house. All Bro. his his hoe train is allowed in the house. Hell yeah, dude! I want nothing but the the most fucked up ECW dudes that are still somehow alive in a house together. In every room, what a camera! Every room, instead of trim on the walls, it's uh, barbed wire. There we go. And There's RVD just, and his juggalo friends are just building pipes out of everything around the house. <laughs> 
and and by pipes we mean banging the hose he's got in the fucking in his train in his in his RV that he just yeah. pulled up in because he had to pause his Midwestern comedy tour to fucking be in the house. <laughs> Godfather's doing pretty well for himself, man. Is he? Yeah, he 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 owns a strip club. He uh <laughs> yes, dude. The thing is, is like Godfather. Imagine the hoe train at an actual strip club. That'd be so sick. The the when you talk to other wrestlers. I forgot the name the the name of the gentleman that plays Godfather, but they say that is him. That's not a gimmick. That's how he, he is a pimp. pimp. <laughs> he is a club owning, party time having, big pothead, and I think he's got a new strain of marijuana, by the way. So shout out there. Yeah, props. Uh, yeah, props. But like they say, this is you no, know, this is him. He is Godfather. He, that's well, not a gimmick. It's not a character. That is him. What was his name the, when he was like the the Christian character? The Good Father. The Good Father. <laughs> when he was, he was uh, part stupid of uh, like that. Right to censor. With, yeah, with right, Val, right to censor. Reformed yeah. Val Venus. Yeah, reformed uh, Stephen Richards. Like a, <laughs> Stevie Richards and Ivory. Ivory. Yep. It cured Val Venus's crippling sex addiction. I just so loved. I good. loved just the fucking way he talked back then. He would be like, "Oh yeah, I just." Can't stand to wear these clothes. And it's just like, dude, stop. <laughs> I'm like fucking about to pass out. Oh, you're it's raping just... me? <laughs> yeah, dude. Jesus Christ. That's so good. Val yeah, Val is the... Good guy. intercontinental champion. Yeah, I loved Val. Old Valley Venus and his song was the shit. Just the whole the whole thing was the sexy the sax. Yeah. Dude, the just Kyle LaBeouf trembling in fear and seeing Val Venus's head in the line, just peeking over. Just any opportunity I have. To use, any conversation where I have an opportunity to use the animated gif of Val Venus popping out of the bushes wearing a purple helmet. So I use, that's a it's a classic. Is um, the best Titan Tron ever. Yeah, that's good shit. Uh, so I guess before we get out of here, uh, since we're, we're about, we're hitting our little hour mark here. Um, let's, uh, I guess, should we, do we want to finish this up? Just, do we want to just talk about the Super Bowl really quick before we head yeah, out of here? Absolutely. Uh, I know it's painful for you. We, we, we don't have to take too much yeah, time. On it. Yeah. Let's, let's do this before we get out of here. I want to talk about the Ohio train thing, but we might have to wait to see where that happens. That we can talk about it next <laughs> week. Cause that is wild. Like we are literally seeing like that be buried There's, right now. That's one of like what three train derailments that have happened last week. And like, yeah, and like no one's talking about it. Like it's it's literally like it's. I'm pretty sure like diesel, like the shit got in the water supply in Ohio is what I'm understanding. Like uh, I'm pretty uh, sure. Oh, I have. I don't know about that. I know. Thank God it's fucking only Ohio. Jeez. Chill, chill. That's what I'm talking about. Like, look, the shots, the shots. We're not going to do this right before we do the Super Bowl. Okay, we're not going <laughs> to. We're not going to shit on Cleveland. We're not going <laughs> to. No, just right Ohio. Before, just Ohio. right. Yeah, just 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 the rest of the state. Yeah, if, yeah. if you want to poison Cincinnati, fucking get it because that place is a is shithole. Okay. All right, we agree um, on, we agree on but, that. But the Super Bowl uh, just happened, obviously, and we all gave our our um, our, our predictions last week. If we you haven't know, we should have all listened to State wrong. Baby. We're all, we all yeah, we all to... we should the State Baby should have. And that's so funny because when this happened, uh, that that's what I was thinking. I was like, State Baby was right. I turned the Illuminati. I yeah, brought the Illuminati. Fucking Illuminati. We should never have doubted them for a second. But if but if you guys haven't noticed, we're without our front office today, so we don't have any of the the the, the slideshows or any of the cute shit that we normally have that he does. Um, he is spending his Valentine's Day today, so hope you're having. We we all hope you're having a cute dinner and having a great time, front office. Um, and it's our birthdays this weekend. His birthday Saturday, my birthday Sunday. I'm about to be thirty, people. So wow. Um, Jack's already there. Stuart's already there. Uh, I'll be thirty I'll just, in a couple weeks. I'll just be the next one. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we all gave our predictions last week. Um, the game was on Sunday. Uh, all an Absolute all-time game. One of the best Super Bowls I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, even if, but you know. Locked up at the end. But it all comes down to the blown call at the end. Or, you know, maybe not a blown call. Yeah, you know, he comes out and said he held him and everything. But so the Chiefs-Eagles play Sunday. 38-35 final for the Chiefs. It, it is a back and forth air raid blowout. I mean, these dudes are just going at it. It's an all-time Super Bowl. It's everything anybody wanted. The two best offenses in football going at it. The defense, there was really no defense played. Um, <laughs> shout out to the Chiefs O line for holding the the you know the Holy Eagles shit, right? D line um, to to no sacks. Um, but the big talk and the only thing that's really being talked about is the last drive of the game. James Bradbury is covering Juju Smith. 
Um, and there is a throw by Patrick Mahomes into the end zone that I'm going nuts because I'm like, damn, Jalen's about to get the ball back. And then I see the flag. And it is a one of the worst holding call, defensive holding calls I have ever seen in my fucking life. Like, you can't call that in that moment. You just can't it's do a it. Pe- it's a penalty that decides the entire game. It's just like... For, for you, I, I haven't seen work. anything... I haven't seen anything this egregious since the Saints got that no call against the Rams. Or the that, week before I mean, where the bang where they got a fifth down against the Bengals. You know what I'm saying? It just seemed too yeah, it just seems like it seems like they, like no one ever and I was just talking to a guy today um at work. I am the last guy that I mean I'm a sports guy. I've always been. I mean I'm I'm I've always kind of like laughed at the people who think that sports are rigged and and all that stuff. And you never want to be that guy. But like when you see some of the officiating and like and I'll never be the guy that thinks that a whole game is rigged, but I do think that there are like scenarios where they are like you know, it, you know, this, if if the game is this close, like this, you know, we want calls. You know, make this call, yeah. make this call. And I think you know, the last couple of weeks for the Chiefs, there's been, I mean, that Bengals game entire like this was a very well officiated Super Bowl. They let the guys play the entire game. It was until a well that. until that play. Yeah, the Bengals game was bad from start to finish. It was just one blown shit call. Like, how is this happening after another? So at least I'll give them credit that they did. They called a great game up until yeah, they that got call. that. They got that Miles Sanders call right with the throw that he didn't catch it, and make a football move, and that was right way closer yeah, than people very, may have. May have they thought. got that right. That they, they got the Dallas Goddard catch. Uh, you know, right. Um, I, the Devonta Smith one kind of pissed me off. I do think he caught that ball, but you know, that's a 50, 50 ball. It, I can see why you thought it hit the ground, but for other than that, you know, it, it was, it, it, it was a, it was a great officiated Super Bowl. but like you said, this game, it, it decides the game. It, it was an uncatchable ball. In my opinion, in my opinion, I see a lot of people coming out saying, Oh, well, without that, that's a walking touchdown for Juju. No way. Juju is not catching that ball. Um, I think that that was an uncatchable ball. And, you know, shout out to James Bradbury, came out, owned it. He, it, it for anybody that hates the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, no matter what you think about them, everyone has to give them credit for how uh, this they have. They could write a book on how to handle a loss in the Super Bowl. Nick Sirianni came out and they, he said uh, that holding call has nothing to do with the outcome. He goes, a lot of people want to give it, call it, chalk it up to one thing. He goes, then it's not that. He goes, we lost that game fair and square. James Bradbury came out. He could have said, "I, you know, he could have bitched and complained." He came out. I mean, and the balls on that man to get in front of the media and say, "Yeah, I, I held him. I was hoping they weren't going to call it. I held him. You know, it is what it is. It's my bad." You know, everyone took took account for the loss. Um, but then you've got, you know, um, you've got these, you know, the Chiefs players. You got Juju uh, chirping on Twitter, and and you know, everybody's firing back. And Mahomes he's wife. a fucking, he's a scumbag, dude. Yeah, it's Mahomes, like bro, your wife was asking the media to apologize to the Chiefs. Really? Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah were, well, anybody that underdogs. said that they weren't going to make it back to the Super Bowl this year needs to apologize. Like, shut the fuck up. One of their players anything. was like, one of their players said they were an underdog story. No, you're fucking not. Or you're not. And then Mahomes said today in our rebuilding year we won the championship. Like, bro, chill. No, like, you didn't. <laughs> you, this didn't. Is not, you didn't rebuild. You lost Tyreek Hill. Like I understand it's a big loss, but like I we if we go back, I said at the beginning of the year that Tyreek's gonna miss Mahomes more than Mahomes. Even and, and, and that's not even the case. Everybody's like, oh damn, Tyreek fucked up. And I bet Tyreek's sitting there going, Oh man, jealousy. Bro, Tyreek Hill has got a ring. He is he getting 72, mi- 72 million dollars in guaranteed money. Guaranteed money. He's in, in Florida Miami. where there's in Miami, no state federal, no, no income tax. He's yeah. in Miami. And is that? And he's got a ring. And he just had. And he's getting seven hundred targets a game. Like he's literally <laughs> the offense there. I mean, him and Waddle. But like no matter Waddle has those games, but it, every game Tyreek is getting the, the targets. It's it's yeah. like a it's a every week is the thing. He is not tripping over this um, at all. I guarantee it. Um, but yeah, you know Juju's tri- you know chirping on Twitter, and then now there's like this back and forth. So I guess you could say the Eagles are kind of are kind of letting it go now. But I think they have kind of been poked a little bit. You know how 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 professional are you going to keep acting when uh, the team that won? Who? Why are they even thinking about the Eagles? You know what I'm saying? Like chill right. out. They weren't even shit talking up the game. Like this wasn't like one of those things where you know the Bengals going into the Chiefs game when they lost. Everybody's like. You know, the, the the Bengals were talking like they were three time champs and like, you know, they everybody picked. We admittedly picked the Bengals. Everybody was riding with the bank. It was like disrespectful to the Chiefs, the Burrowhead thing. So like when they won, they were like, 
you know, you motherfuckers were giving credit to a team that didn't even deserve it yet. It's like, it's like the Memphis Grizzlies right now. Like the Memphis Grizzlies are talking like they've won three championships and and if John Morant would have shut his mouth, maybe KD wouldn't be in the West and Kyrie wouldn't be in the mat. You know, now the West is literally just, you know, oops. Um, but it, it's kind of the same thing where it's like, yeah, you know, th- they lose and they're like, okay, you know, they're shit talking. The Bengals shouldn't have been that confident. But the Eagles, you know, this was a very, uh, there was no really big shit talking. The, the, the main story was the, you know, the Kelsey brother thing and, and stuff like that. Um, but dude, what a, what a, what a letdown for that game to be remembered like that. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a great game and the better team that day won. That's just, I mean, absolutely. The Chiefs, Definitely, they deserve the win. I mean, I think the Eagles should have played better in the second half, but that was, I mean, it was 35 35 until that blown call. So um, I still and, think, and you, got, and you got to think, Jalen Hurts, if they if they kick that field goal, Jalen Hurts is getting the ball back with almost two minutes left. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's a completely different game, possibly. Yeah. And, and I'd like to see what Jalen. Right. And, 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 well, and you never know. I mean, they, the, the Philly could have went down and scored a touchdown. They could have not, he could have thrown an interception on the first play. You never know. I mean, but, but that's the kind of thing you want to see that in Jalen Hurts. We've got to see young guys like Mahomes. You've got to see, you know, some of these guys like Burrow. You've seen them in these situations. It, it you know, it'd be cool to see Jalen Hurts no, in ex- that moment. You exactly. Could For a game that fucking cool to end on, like, Essentially, like a bunch of kneel downs and a fucking field goal kick at the end, and, and then the worst hail mary. Like everybody was giving him shit for the hail mary, but like, dude, what was he supposed to do? I mean, he just threw. Right. Everybody's Covers like, oh, was good anyways. Yeah, like where was that going? Like, I'm, I mean, it was an awful throw, but like, dude, you got to think they're probably thinking like they're probably deflated after that call, and like, you know, this is they know that the chance. I mean, they're not winning that game, so like, they're no matter what there. they would have done, no matter what they would have done right there, it wouldn't have been half as embarrassing as what Dallas did on their last play. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. they're good. They're good. They didn't have no, Miles no Sanders playing that. center yeah. and getting blown the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Zeke getting blown up, bro. <laughs> it was a really that good. Shit was game. so funny. It was a really good game, but yeah, we were we were robbed of the opportunity to see a, a great game go to overtime. So that that's the blemish on it. But overall, cool, well done, NFL. You did a good job. Rihanna, I fuck with it. Job. Yeah, Rihanna, yeah, I'll fuck with that. It was great. Yeah. And uh, it was great. Yeah. So we got, we wanted to, it was a great game. Um, Rihanna killed the halftime show. I saw a lot of people hating on that. I didn't even know she was pregnant. Boring. What did they, what, Nobody what, were did. The, what were the haters saying? I don't even know. So I've seen well, a lot of people are hating on her backup dancers, you know, looking like marshmallows or whatever, which is funny, but like everybody's like, like, bro, you know, I like that baggy that? shit. You know? Yeah. Did you I see did that too. clip that came out that one of those dudes almost fell off the fucking platform? I did not no. see that. Dude, but I go look, go look it up after this. He like literally like rolled back on his ankle, and he like his ass is on the ledge. It's like literally like that, like watching like shit. those parkour dudes. It's like you're like you you seize up with when, when he I does saw, it. I so saw that scary. Fox cut away from Rihanna at the end though, but she did throw up. She threw up the uh, the, 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 the Illuminati diamond, the triangle, rock, the rock, the Rock Nation. Dry, um, you know the the Rock Nation diamond, <laughs> of course. Um, I thought she was gonna give somebody the diamond cutter. So she she did the uh, so she did that and they cut away from her. But like at the end of the performance, like they don't show up, but she's doing that at the end of the performance. Awesome. Um, but yeah, but everybody says you know it was boring and stuff. Like it, here's the thing: of course, we didn't get to see Rihanna shaking her ass and doing. All, I mean, we did get to see her shaking her ass. But we didn't get to see like the full thing. But she because she's pregnant and like that's that and right. She still slay and she slayed it. Like people like give that girl. Like, and this thing, nobody knew she was um, pregnant. That she had given a, she was apparently doing an interview with Nate Burleson or somebody uh, beforehand and said there's going to be a special guest during the performance. And all week, everybody's like, oh, who the fuck should get? Everybody I thought, thought it was Jay Z. Yeah, I thought, I thought, it, was I thought it was how she did nobody. Yeah, nobody knew. I I was saying, I was telling my brother was here. I was like, dude, it's Jay Z's there. Jay Z's in the crowd there. He's coming out during Umbrella or something. This is going to be sick. Um, and then the and what a power move for the baby's the only the only guest performance she didn't need anybody else she didn't need Jay Z she didn't need another rapper or another performer to come up there she did the entire show herself and she killed it and she didn't even play she didn't do Ponda replay I mean think about all the songs she didn't do and she still I mean that girl she did a lot got, of songs she's got bangers four days yeah four dude. days fuck Beyonce dude Rihanna's the fucking queen. She's the fucking queen. I mean, look, I, I, you won't get me to say fuck, fuck Bay, but I'll I say fuck Bay. I'll yeah, fuck, I, mean, I say fuck Bay, fuck Jay. Ooh, girl, love it. I feel it. I love it. You know, I'm not a big Jay guy, uh, but uh, Beyonce. She's Queen B. Uh, I'm a Beyonce stan. 
but I'm with you. I'm Rihanna. I all took you as more day. of a Tay Tay guy. <laughs> a little Tay Tay. I'm I'm more like a Tate Tate guy. You know, Tate Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that's me but but yeah so but, but yeah, Super Bowl big big great game big letdown at the end all of us were wrong uh two weeks in a row we picked <laughs> unanimously against the Chiefs I'm pretty sure um let's I, never be unanimous ever again let's just never I, be unanimous again I just wanted them to lose I just wanted to speak it into existence well yeah now we're getting this cringy shit like I said now we're getting that we're underdogs we're this we're that Juju you might not even play there next year like I'm pretty sure on a one year deal you're a free agent big dog like you're, they're going to replace you. Like I just saw today on Bleacher Report, they did perfect like matches or like where they think people are going to end up, and they got Jacoby Myers ending up in KC. And if he ends up going to, he's a ten times the receiver Juju is. And if he ends Sky up, Sky Moore is entering his second season. Sky Moore, who looked great the he second did. part of the season, he, he had that. Sky hit. Moore him, is who we want Anthony Schwartz to fucking be. Him and him, those two plays, uh, him and Kadarius Tony in that thing, the same exact play of them scoring on that where they went out or they cut in and then cut back out and no one was there. Um, I mean, and that's another thing. I hope the Giants feel re- are ridiculous because Kadarius that's the Tony, one dude I felt good for. I was I was so happy for Tony. Yeah, Kadarius Tony. I mean, he looks like a crackhead, and there's something wrong with him, but. Great player. Dude, look at him. We'll get a picture of him. Like he's no, always got his eyes all wide. Dude, he's always got like the hood, the thing on, like the little cover that wide receivers wear on, like the little hood thing. Yeah. He's just so he's just awkward looking. But um I'm looking forward to Juju begging Jackson Mahomes for repost on TikTok in about a year's time. So yeah, no shit. Because like, be like say, that offense is gonna be he's gonna be forgotten about. We got Pacheco, who's gonna be the guy going forward. You got uh he said Sky Moore, Kadarius Tony. They're you know if they replace him Jared in the offseason. McKinnon. Jared McKinnon. Look, Jared McKinnon is great because he's that offense. Like I, you're not going to get me blowing Jared McKinnon on Jared McKinnon on here. Jared McKinnon. Anybody who's in that offense, I'll blow Jared. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that you you can take the whole load, Stuart. That's all yours, big dog. <laughs> um, but you can we'll you see can burp the balls. Yum yum, get you some. <laughs> Uh, before we get out of here, on the last note, uh, shout out Calvin Ridley. Today is his; uh, he's a eligible to be reinstated. <laughs> I am happy for the guy. I, I cannot wait for Calvin Ridley. I think it's ridiculous he got suspended for the whole year. Um, especially, it sucks that he was taking time for mental health. While all this all happened to him, uh, very excited to see him in Jacksonville next year. So, cannot wait for that. Um, but on that note, this has been episode 35. Is this 35? This is 35, 35 fellas. 35. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. It's Paco's Rehab uh, po- front office. We've missed you. Hope you had a great day, great date night, kisses. Um, uh, make sure you guys go uh, subscribe to all of our stuff. Make sure you're watching our YouTube videos. We're really pushing our YouTube videos right now. So please make sure you're tuning into our episodes. You're liking our shorts. We're doing YouTube shorts. We're doing uh, TikToks. We're... So make sure you're like following us on all your socials. Make sure you click the bell on all of them so you get notified. Make sure you watch our clips that Clip Daddy up there's making. Uh, make sure you tune in. Uh, we got some. We're, we're kind of tuning around, me- messing with our intro the next couple of weeks. So you're gonna get some new stuff there. Uh, but other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Um, you guys have a good one. Kisses. Peace.